Hello everyone and welcome once again to another episode of Selling Greenville, your favorite real estate podcast, as I like to to say, and I believe. Uh, your favorite real estate podcast here in lovely Greenville, South Carolina. I am your host, as always, Stan McCune, realtor here in the upstate of South Carolina, here in the dog days of the summer, and uh, I appreciate you guys tuning in. As always, uh, I like to mention, my contact information is in the show notes. You can look that up, reach out to me however it's most convenient for you. And if you need a realtor, I'm your guy. And uh, by the way, if you like this show, please subscribe to it. I'd appreciate that. I'd like to see more subscribers. And i really like to see those ratings and reviews you guys leave. Please go ahead and do that. That helps the show. And I appreciate it every time I see one of those come through. Today, we are going to be talking about the don'ts of new construction. The don'ts of new construction. That's a weird word to say. It's, it's, it's not easy to say don'ts um, without sounding really weird. Uh, but that is what we're going to be talking about today. New construction is, is, is a hot topic, you know, in a market when there is low inventory. Um, some people are just saying, you know what, rather than getting into bidding wars on every single house that comes on the market, why don't I just build my own house? That's so much simpler in so many ways. But there are a lot of pitfalls to new construction, and we want to make sure that we get out in front of those things. Um, And so I I don't want this to be a negative episode, but um, I thought about doing the do's and the don'ts, and I decided, let's just focus on the don'ts. Maybe maybe we will do the do's, and I'm not referring to Mountain Dew, um, which I guess that was their slogan at one point, something close to that. but, but but maybe I'll, I'll do a podcast on the do's of new construction at a different time. Today, just the don'ts. And so let's jump right in. Um, there's a lot of, of, of different assumptions that people have when it comes to building their own home. And by the way, when, I, when I'm, we're talking about new construction here, I'm, I have in mind primarily with production builders, you know, building and subdivisions. Some of this may also apply to, um, to communities where uh, or, or, or to uh, custom builders where you can buy your own land and then build using that custom builder. Um, but I'm, I'm focused primarily on production-built communities, production-built neighborhoods. Um, and let's just start here. Don't assume that the HOA in the community that you're building in, and most of these communities now, they have HOAs. Do not assume that that HOA is going to let you do anything. <laughs> and that, that's a very important distinction right? Uh, a very important caveat. HOAs, um, you know, they will, they will have covenants and restrictions, and you need to, to make sure that you um, are aware of what those covenants and restrictions say, and, uh, and, and then, you know, go from there. Make sure that, for instance, if you're wanting to put a pool in, you need to make sure that you know uh, not just what the HOA's requirements are for pools, which, by the way, most HOAs do not allow above-ground pools. Um, most of them are okay with in-ground pools, but then it's got to be approved by an architectural review committee. Now, if you're in a community, which there's a lot of communities uh, now being built that are on septic systems rather than public sewer, you might not even be able to build a pool in there because of the septic system. So you need to get out in front of some of those things. And unfortunately, some of those things you won't be able to get out in front of until after you close. An architectural review committee with an HOA board, uh, they might not even talk to you. A lot of them will not even talk to you until you actually are an owner in the community and submit to them actual plans. And yeah, it's frustrating. This is why some people hate HOAs, but this is the way it is. Um, Don't assume anything when it comes to the HOAs. Make sure that uh, that you do as much homework as possible if you're planning to do, particularly if you're planning to do un- unusual things on the outside of your house, or or if you like to have things in your backyard that are perhaps you know trampolines and and pools and and you know things like that that um, not everyone has in their backyard. If you want to have unique animals, a lot of them have restrictions on on animals. Um, if you have a, an, an RV or something like that, a lot of them have restrictions on where you can park those things. Boats, same thing. Uh, make sure that you know what you're getting into on the front end. Uh, let's just say this. HOAs are not getting uh, more lenient. They are getting stricter. And so with each new community that's being built, 
you know, it's, you know, the, the Overton window, as, uh, as it's called, for what's acceptable is, is shifting. Um, and things are, are getting stricter and stricter. So don't make any assumptions when it comes to that. Don't assume that new construction means that you can customize anything. That's the second point here. Don't assume new construction means that you can just customize anything and everything with regard to the home. Some builders allow you to customize more than others. And in some communities as well. You know, uh, there are, for instance, Ryan Holmes uh, and DR Horton, they will do some. Uh, I don't want to say low end communities, but some communities where they're, you know, just kind of throwing up homes pretty quickly and then others that are kind of nice, you know, Um, and and the standard for what they allow you to customize might be different in one community versus another. Um, But the main thing is almost all of these are, are pretty strict and they're getting stricter in terms of what they allow you to customize. They might not even allow you to customize all the colors in a house, or, or they might have, you know, a, a small list of colors that you can uh, base off of, you know, for your paint and for the exterior and whatnot. They might have requirements for this home has to look X, Y, Z different than the home next to it. Uh, there's all sorts of things. So, so people oftentimes I'll hear that, that they want to do new construction because they want to be able to pick out everything. Um, Every community is a little bit different. Make sure that if you're, if that's a big selling point for you, that you're going into a community where you actually can pick out what you want to pick out. Uh, most of them have limitations. Um, and and by the way, uh, major changes to the the floor plan or the structure and whatnot. Most production built communities are completely uninterested in doing that. There are a few. I have uh, I've had closings with a with a few like Sable. Sable is an example of one that that uh, that has allowed some unique customizations to layout and to you know moving some walls around and whatnot. Most of them will not do that. Most of the production builders, unless you you really start to get into the higher price point, where essentially uh, the production built homes aren't really production built; they're just custom built. Um, they're just all done by the same builder. Um, but in these communities that are, you know, under five hundred thousand dollars, uh, most of them, what you uh, what you see is what you get in terms of of the floor plan and uh, and things like that. So don't assume that you can make dramatic changes uh, to the floor plan in some of these communities as well. Don't assume that new construction is better or worse than older homes. I, I hear both of these. You know, some people are like, uh, I I've heard of people use the the phrase spec home almost like a swear word uh, this is like a spec home um, I, you know I don't even really know what that means when people use that as a swear word um, but listen new construction is uh, sometimes better or worse than older construction I have seen some really shoddy older construction around here I've seen some really shoddy newer construction I've seen great uh, on both sides as well. Um, you you can't go in with assumptions one way or, or the other. Me as a realtor, I can help you uh, from the standpoint of of being able to advise which builders I think do a better job than the others. Um, and then of of course we can follow up, which I'm I'm gonna mention here uh, again in a moment. Um, it's good to have inspections done as well to to have an inspector lay eyes on it to make sure that things are being done the way they should. Um, we do have some codes that are increasingly stricter. Codes nowadays are uh, just stricter than they were in the old days. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the older homes were built more more poorly just because code was less strict. Part of why code gets stricter is because builders try to cut corners more frequently. Um, and so the code helps to, to offset some of that and to ensure that builders don't cut corners um, in areas that are uh, of the building process that are really, really important. Um, another one I hear frequently is some people have very strong opinions on crawl spaces versus slab homes. Listen, both homes have pros and cons. I live uh, in a home that is partial basement, partial slab. My previous home was partial crawl space, partial slab. Um, they, they both have pros and cons. There's not a clear cut. This one is better than the other. Um, it really depends on what you're looking for that determines whether um, 
a slab home or a crawl space home would make more or less sense for you. Um, most homes nowadays are built on slabs. In the old days, the crawl space was much more commonplace. Don't assume that one is better or worse than the other. Another pointer here. Um, every uh, home builder, at least in the production built world, they have a preferred lender that they want you to use. And they have you know some type of arrangements with those lenders. I don't know what all those arrangements are. Um, but basically, if you use their preferred lender, usually you'll get some type of a, of a closing credit. Don't assume that that is your best option. Um, don't blindly use the preferred lender. There may be better options. There may be other lenders that are willing to um, match what that lender is offering in terms of uh, the credit while providing a much better rate. Um, that I, I've seen that happen before. So you want to make sure that you don't just blindly use, okay, I'm just going to use you know, the, the builder's preferred lender, um, clearly, you know, they're offering a $2,500, uh, lender credit. I mean, $2,500 is pretty awesome. I definitely think I want that. Um, you actually may be, uh, leaving money on the table by doing that. And, uh, and so this is where I can recommend lenders as well that will just be honest with you that I'll just say, you know, we can't really beat that. Like you're going to, you're going to be better off in the long run by just using them. Um, or if not, they'll be honest. Oh, yeah, we can definitely we definitely have a track record of beating them. We can definitely match that credit. Let's let's move forward with this. Um, another point here, don't ignore the value of the lot. OK, this is very, very important. Um, the lot that you choose has a major, major impact on, on both your enjoyment of the house, but also the value, the long-term value of the house. And sometimes it's really hard to visualize at the, at the beginning, you know, when it's just a piece of land, a piece of dirt. Uh, but some lots are clearly better than others. Um, they're, they're, and there's a variety of factors at play here um, in terms of sight lines, in terms of how, you know, what does it back up to? Is it going to back up to another house? Is it going to back up to uh, a road? Is it going to is it gonna back up to trees? Um, there's a lot of different things to consider here. And again, it, it, can, it may be difficult for you if this is the first time you've done it to visualize it. Uh, and this is where I can help. And I, I, again, I can help to tell you, okay, from my experience, this lot, um, you're not going to have any privacy. It doesn't look like you're going to have a whole lot of privacy with this lot. Um, whereas, you know, this lot, this this one may have issues with erosion when it rains. There, there's a whole lot of considerations. Um, I've got some experience with this, so I can help you to, to kind of paint the picture of what it's going to look like. Another pointer here. Uh, don't be the first to move into a, a new community, if there's a chance, you'll be the first to move out or, or one of the first to move out. Now, this is really, really important. Some of these communities take years to be built. Uh, in fact, a lot of them do. A lot of them take years to, to be fully built. Let's say you're one of the first to move in. And then a couple of years later, you're ready to move out. You might find yourself in really big trouble because you might find that you're now competing with homes that are being built that are brand new. And here you have a two-year-old home, lived-in home that's not as nice as the newer homes, but you might be asking for a similar price point to those newer homes. That is not going to work out super well for you. That is a, a scenario that you want to avoid like the plague. So make sure if you're, if you're one of the first to move into a new community, make sure that your plan is long-term to stay in that community. Because you may find yourself in a situation where you have a hard time selling that house down the road. And you might say, well, I'll just rent the house out. Okay, again, look at the covenants and restrictions. Sometimes there are some, some strict rules in terms of, of renting properties out that the covenants and restrictions will outline. So make sure um, that you're aware of what you can and can't do and know as well that those uh, covenants and restrictions can change. Um, don't pretend like you know more than the builder. I see this sometimes as well, um, where someone that has, you know, a, a little bit of handyman experience or whatever, they come in and, you know, start acting as if they know more than the builder and they start educating the builder on, oh, you 
you you're not doing this right. I don't like the way you're doing this. What's going on here? Um, why why did you uh, hang the sheetrock this way? Why did you you know they'll they'll just start doing all this stuff, and that does not the the builder doesn't want to hear that. They're they're not going to handle that well. Um, a better way to do that is to have the property have the new build inspected by a licensed home inspector. That is the best way to go about it. And it's what I highly recommend. And they will listen to an inspector. They might not love what the inspector says, but they know this is someone at the very least that's been licensed. They've gone through some type of a some type of a process. They do this for a living. They're going to respect that person more than just you coming in, you know, and saying this is wrong. This is wrong. I don't like how you did this. And last but not least. Um, shameless plug, do not go into the new construction process unrepresented. These builders that are out here, they want to work with agents. They are offering to pay for agents' realtor fees. Okay, they're offering to pay that. And they're not going to give you a credit if they don't pay it. If you're unrepresented, you're not going to have a cheaper house. They'll pay for, for your ability to be represented by another realtor and they see the value in that they love to be able to have another realtor on the other side that's able to handle all the drama um in theory (laughs) so of course some realtors bring more drama but but a good realtor is able to handle the drama with their client and is able to to deal with things before they reach the desk of the builder and so that is something that provides value for them it provides value and protection for you And you want to have someone in your corner, someone in your corner that is representing you and that has your best interests in mind. And that's what I can do. I've worked with a bunch of these builders over the years, and I'm happy to help you uh, if you go down the new construction route. That's all for uh, today's episode of Selling Greenville. I hope you guys enjoyed it. My contact information, as always, is in the show notes. If you have any questions, uh, please let me know. Rate, review, subscribe. And until next time, hope you guys stay safe and have a great rest of the week.